Hi, I'm Josh Twist, co-founder and CEO of Zuplo. I've actually been working in the API management space for some time. I founded Azure API Management at Microsoft here in Redmond and recently founded Zuplo, another API management product. In this video, I want to talk to you about some comparisons between Zuplo and another popular API management product called Tyke. In particular, I want to look at a couple of things. So let's go through it. So first of all, when you consider Tyke, you have to consider the fact that it's actually three products. There is the cloud or the self-managed version. So the cloud one is obviously a SaaS hosted for you. Self-managed is a licensed version that you run on your own Kubernetes infrastructure. And then there is an open source version as well. I'm going to talk mostly about cloud and self-managed. Those are the paid versions that are supported and are most likely to be used by businesses doing you know, real things with it. Um, one of the challenges there is that when you make a decision between cloud and self-managed, you're making quite a big trade-off. There's differences in features, difference in uh, high availability options, differences in where you can be located. Is it multi-cloud? Tight cloud runs in AWS only, or as self-managed, you can put it anywhere you can run Kubernetes, but you are going to be responsible for running that all on your own. So you're going to run that Kubernetes infrastructure, scale that out. I'm sure you know that is a non-trivial problem. Whereas with Zuplo, you have a single product. So there's just one Zuplo and it's always great. We deploy to the edge at 250 data centers around the world. So you get high availability built in. There's no need to factor that in as a cost. The product is just high availability by its uh, design. And it also scales extremely effectively. It's a serverless infrastructure. We already have customers doing over 1.5 billion API calls per month. And they don't think about infrastructure at all. They don't sneeze at that scale. It just is taken care of by our underlying infrastructure. It's just a single product that can do everything with no trade-offs and no hard decisions to make. Another hard decision you'll make with products like Tyke is, which regions do you want to be in? Which customers do you want to be close to? Um, with Zuplo, we're globally deployed at the edge. So as I mentioned, that's over 250 data centers around the world. It means almost for sure your gateway is going to be running in a city right next to where your customer is at, which gives you insane caching performance um, and makes us a very favorable option when you think about distributed computing, edge computing, and working with any cloud. We have customers on AWS, on Azure, on GCP, and we can securely connect into them. So we think of ourselves as a truly multi-cloud solution and a very cost effective one at that. And actually just to give you a sense of that sort of decision anxiety and how it feels, I'm actually part way through signing up for a Tyke account here. So I've now got this decision to make of which region do I want to be in? Do I want to be on the West Coast of America, on the East Coast, in London, in Germany, or in Singapore? Can't I be everywhere? I have customers all over the place. Why do I have to make this decision? I'm going to pick Oregon because that's closest to me where I am right now. And I understand that my home region cannot be changed once my organization is created. Um, again, this sort of sense of decision anxiety is something we think about a lot when when using Zuplo. And so I want to get set up here. I'm going to go and I want to have manual control. So I'm going to do the manual setup of my infrastructure. And what that means is it's going to take me about 15 minutes before I have um, an instance to play with. I've got a lot of configuration to do. Let me show you what the Zuplo experience feels like for this. So I'm in Zuplo here. I'm going to create a new project, we call it. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Zuplo uh, v Tyke. And I'll click Create Project. And that will be ready typically in around, it's already ready to edit. And the gateway is typically deployed and live in around 10 seconds. So it's extremely fast. It's great for collaboration. You can see my gateway is already live. So if I click on this, this is live on a URL that I can share with other people. And yep, it's telling me I have no route because I've added no route. But you see how fast it is. The, the, we want to get out of your way, enable your engineers to move very quickly, set up new environments. They can create as many of these development projects as they like. Um, when you're uh, signed up as a customer on Zuplo so they can explore the product. It's very, very quick. Give you a sense of that performance and that speed, actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a change. I'm going to add a route. Uh, this is going to be a very simple route that proxies to, I don't know, let's do an Echo API. This Echo API is a backend that simply echoes whatever our gateway sends to it, so it's useful for debugging. Um, I'm going to save that by clicking on this button here. And when that finishes spinning, it's already live. So if I go and refresh this now, you'll see I get that echo response, which shows me the um, uh, what the the gateway sent to the sent to the echo server. So really, really quick. 
Um, let's switch back actually. So we've set it up, we've seen what it's like. What is it like to deploy these products? And how do we think about managing them in the way that would fit and integrate with the developer's workflow? Well, with Tyke, you have a couple of options. If you wanted to use Git, which is what most developers are using today, you can use their Tyke sync and set that up and then configure a pipeline. And you know, this is non-trivial stuff, or you can use Tyke operator and kind of set up your Kubernetes deployment, which you're gonna be managing yourself. So that's an option. Or you can use Zuplo, which is natively GitOps enabled. Everything in Zuplo is a text file. So this routes configuration is just a JSON file. Your custom modules in here are just uh, TypeScript files, your custom content and markdown files. All of that stuff goes into Git. And actually we have native integration. So I'm gonna show you that now. Actually, if I click on source control here, I can actually connect my project to a GitHub repo. This is gonna create a new GitHub repo called Zuplo v -Tyke. Um, I'll create that now. It'll typically just take a few seconds. And we work with Bitbucket and GitLab, etc., cetera, um, as well. But now I've connected my project to, to, Bit, uh, sorry, to GitHub. If we go and take a look at that repo, what you'll see is I have this little brown dot here on my main branch. What that tells me is that our Zuplo deployer, which is running on GitHub, is actually deploying your app the minute it sees a commit. So in this case, the, the deployer is deployed uh, what is going to be our production image of our gateway. So if I show you the URL here, it was .dev on the end, and it was main because that's my working copy. Um, but what we've just deployed is .app. That means that's a live production instance running at the edge at 250 data centers around the world. And as you can see, it was deployed extremely quickly. Actually, if I go back, it was deployed in eight seconds. That's how long it took us to go from that commit to a deploy. I want to show you that in action a little bit more. Um, but I'll come back to this in just a second. You're getting a sense of the speed and the speed with which we can add new environments. Actually, let me show you one thing. So what I wanna do now is, great, I have a development environment for my individual developer. Um, I have a production environment, but I probably want some more environments. I maybe want a staging environment or a preview environment. Well, I'm just gonna create a preview branch here. And by default now, this is gonna start deploying that preview branch for me. So if you see here, actually it'll just take a few seconds typically. Am I on preview? Oh, sorry, I need to go to my preview branch. So switch to preview, look at this, and then you'll see we've actually also deployed a preview branch. Uh, succeeded in seven seconds. So that's how easy it was. I've now got two branches that are out there in the world that we can collaborate it over, can be tested, and that's how easy it was. So you can choose platforms that are cumbersome, complex, require a lot of management, require dedicated DevOps people, whether you're using cloud or self-managed, or you can have a tool which is literally GitOps enabled to enable your developers to do everything they need to do to get your environments live. And we actually have some customers using our unlimited environments option. That would mean that you can have an environment for every commit, for every team, for every experiment. And that really changes the game when it comes to collaboration, because now, uh, at any stage, a team that's collaborating on a new API, you'll be able to see what that API looks like in a deployed world, independent from your main, from your production, from preview, from staging, and allows folks to collaborate on that. And that includes your developer portal, which I'll show you in a minute. So every environment gets its own developer portal. So that's a great way to look at the changes. You know, do I like the way this new API design is shaping up? Do I like the way the the the, the shape of the objects, etc., the shape of the URLs? Do I think this is making sense? That's a great way for your team to be able to collaborate and review that. And those deployments, again, around the world, highly available, zero millisecond startup time serverless architecture are typically deployed in under 20 seconds. So extremely, extremely fast. The other thing, well, actually, that's one of the main reasons people decide to use Zuplo is they really are impressed by the collaboration and the speed and the ability to create new environments at low cost. You know, for each environment with a product like Tyke, you're going to be paying for those environments. You're going to be paying for staging, paying for preview, uh, paying, paying for production. With Zuplo, there's very little additional cost for, for infinite environments. Um, actually, it's a very cost-effective solution. So that really changes the game. That's why people often choose Zuplo. But what we find is people really fall in love with the product when they start programming it and sort of breaking out of jail of like, what can this product do and I need to do something custom. And most API management products have some kind of programmability model. Uh, Tyke has a plugin model that supports a couple of languages. 
I feel it doesn't feel as easy and accessible as a, a programming tool as it should to a developer and it doesn't feel familiar to how middlewares often work on um, on most programming languages. And so we've deliberately designed Zuplo to feel extremely familiar. There's no need for a training course, no need for an army of consultants. Your engineers will be very successful very quickly and really just grok how Zuplo works. So uh, I really think uh, Zuplo, we call it the programmable gateway for a specific reason. So let's go and try that actually. I'm gonna show you now. Let's imagine we wanted to write a custom, I don't know, let's do a custom policy. Um, I'm gonna invent something. So for anyone accessing this, we want to create some new policy. Now, you can see we have a request pipeline and a response pipeline, it's very intuitive, and we have lots of policies in here like rate limiting, and you know our rate limiting is dynamic and is also programmable, so you can give a different rate limit to premium customers versus free customers. There's tons of stuff to show there but I wanna show the programmable side. So in this case, I'm actually gonna make my own policy right now. This policy, let's pretend it's an authentication policy that wants to see a query string on the URL of foo equals bar. Like how hard, how quickly could I do that and get that into production, let's say. So I'm gonna create a new module here, new policy. I'm gonna call it custom auth. I get to write some code in here, some TypeScript or JavaScript. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say if request.query, so that's the query string, dot foo does not equal bar, then return new response. You cannot come in. And I'm gonna set the status. And these are all web standards we're using here. This uh, response object is from, is from your, is the same object you see in a browser. Status 401. I'm gonna save that and then we're just gonna enable it on the root. So here we go, let's add that policy, custom code, custom auth was the name of the policy. Let's save that. And now if I go to this endpoint again, just by clicking here, that's already live, that change I just made, I will get an, an error, a 401 response saying you can't come in. Unless of course, I put a query string on here saying foo equals bar and then I actually get the response that I expected. So it's that easy, it's that quick to customize your solution. There's so much you can do here. We have customers calling S3 storage, writing to databases, reading from databases, and uh, cache and key value storage. It's extremely powerful. Pretty much anything you can imagine you can do with Node or JavaScript, you can do in our programming model here. It's actually how we built most of Zuplo. So we're using the same approach to writing policies that you get to use like I just showed you right now. Um, last thing I wanna do with that actually is just show you how I would get that change to production now. Let's not go to production, let's go to preview. I'm not ready to go to production until I've tested in preview. So I'm gonna show you that in action. So I'm gonna do a push to git. Uh, added auth is my comment. Press commit and push. Create a pull request. Uh, I wanna go to preview, not to main. And you can put all your safeguards on GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab to make sure that only the, you know, the, the checks have to go through. We actually have integrated testing as well that will prevent a merge if your API doesn't pass certain tests. Um, but I'm just gonna do this manually now. So I'm gonna create a pull request to preview. And then I'm gonna merge that pull request myself because I have permissions. And that means that if I go to my preview branch now, so I'm on preview, you'll see we've got the brown dot saying that we're deploying. So that is now deploying those changes to my preview environment. It started eight seconds ago and it succeeded actually in seven seconds. So I have a new preview environment. If I click on this, you'll see I'm getting my auth failure. So that's running at 250 data centers around the world and was deployed that quickly. So now I say foo equals bar and it will actually let me in and I get to see the echo response. You can imagine I could now do another pull request from preview to main when I'm ready to go to production and we'll deploy that in under 20 seconds as well. So we call it the programmable API gateway for a reason. It's designed to fit your developer's workflow. So GitOps, Git is easy. You're not worrying about infrastructure, but the thing people really fall in love with is that programmability and just how much power they have at their disposal to build reusable um, policies and modules um, across their infrastructure. Um, we really believe in this idea of like every business should have a Stripe quality API experience for their internal customers and their external customers. So we spent a lot of time designing what we call a Stripe quality experience for our developer portal. And as I mentioned, every environment gets that. So if I go back to the portal here, 
and you'll see it says your developer portal is live. Now I haven't made a very interesting API here, but notice it's already self-documenting. It has that new route I created. I've got some example text here. It shows me what the get request would look like. You get the idea. We have custom pages. Um, you can have integrated authentication options. So if you use API keys or our third party OAuth app integration, then you can have your developers self-serve and get their own API keys, roll their own API keys, manage their client IDs and client secrets. It's extremely powerful. And of course we have dark mode because you know what kind of developer portal wouldn't. So, so that's pretty important too. Um, so that's our beautiful built-in Stripe quality developer experience. And then finally, although there's many more differences as well, but you know, I've just picked a few to talk about today. Um, there is the web application firewall. So uh, there is no built-in web application firewall in, in Tyke that I'm aware of. They do have this um, example, uh, which is notably not ready for production use. Whereas if you go with Zuplo, you're actually getting an integrated web application firewall that's thanks to our partnership with Cloudflare. And we think that's one of the best web application firewalls in the game. And that is included in the price whenever you use Zuplo. So that's gonna help keep your API secure, keep bots out, keep malicious attacks away, uh, help manage distributed denial of service attacks, etc. So there's a quick heads up on some of the differences between um, uh, between Tyke and Zuplo, and I'm gonna go and finish setting up this configuration and making uh, some decisions I kind of wish I didn't have to make. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend giving Zuplo a try. Go to zuplo.com and check it out.